Welcome, I am your pastor, Pastor Omar Ellison with Salt and Light Covenant Church. Open up your heart as we enter in to hear a word from the Lord. If you were turn to with me in your Bibles to Psalm 22 and 3. Psalms 22 and 3. And it reads, are we there? But thou, O, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. The Lord inhabits the praise of his people. Inhabit. When you think about the word inhabit, what does that mean to you? When something's inhabiting something, it's a dwelling place. Amen? Amen. It's a place that's occupied. It's an environment where something is taking place. So if the word has declared that the Lord inhabits our praises, so in the midst of your praise, he's always there. The presence of God is always there. So that's why the enemy sometimes bombard us with day to day and week to week and month to month and year to year and so on. And sometimes you may be in a battle that has gone on, I know myself, hallelujah, for 10 plus years, but you're always to be reminded that God inhabits the praise of his people. No matter what you're going through, you give him honor, glory, and praise because in the midst of that praise, it may be a sacrifice. Guess what? He is there. He is there. And guess what? The enemy recognizes that God inhabits the praise of his people. So he's going to always try to get you off your praise. Amen? Amen. That's a simple thing, isn't it? But he's going to always come to snatch your praise. God inhabits the praise of his people. Now if you would turn to me to Psalms 8. And two. Psalms 8 and 2. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thine enemy and the avenger. Now look what it's saying. It's saying out of the babes, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise. So when we come to him, we must come to him as children, totally depending on him. A child, a baby depends on someone else to care for him, to nourish him. He even draws nutrients, the very source of his existing and being, because if a baby is not fed, he will expire. Amen? So he draws, so he says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, a child, a parent, and their children. Well, we are the children of God, amen? Amen. And we are to come to him as children. Drawing off of him. Depending on him, amen? amen? And we do that in praise. Always be in a place of praise. So if he inhabits our praise, if that's where he's going to occupy, all things was created for him and by him. Amen? No matter what situation you're in, it was created for him and by him. That's why the word says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. No matter what you're facing, you praise the Lord because the word has Declared it. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at Psalms 8 and 2. Thou, it says, Has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger? Now notice here it says, Might. It, that you might, it doesn't say that you will or shall. That you might steal the enemy and the advantage. But guess what? It's going to be based on you. Out of your praise. Not my praise. When you see somebody going for it. 
It's a reminder of what praise does. Amen. 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 Praise still the enemy. Might is an expression, a possibility based on an unfulfilled condition. So that condition is that you steal the enemy is based on your what? On your praise. The enemy knows this, amen? That you might steal the enemy and the adventure. But it is based on your praise. Whether you open up your mouth, it's not my praise, but it is your praise individually, amen? Because we were all born to praise him. Not just the deacons, not just the pastors, just not the mothers, but everything that has breath, every creature. Don't let the rocks cry out for you, amen? Let every one of salt and light, let everyone that's online praise the Lord. He inhabits the praise of his people. That's where he dwells at, amen? So that's why a lot of times life comes to knock you, to get you to shut your mouth. Still. Still means stop. It means not moving. Amen. 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 It means silence. Yes. Paralyzed. Yes. So who is your praise paralyzing? The enemy. Yes. It stays the enemy. Yes. Your praise stays the enemy. Amen. Because yes. either you going to stay him or he going to stay you. Because it doesn't matter what's going on. You're going to praise somebody. Either you're giving the Lord glory or what's coming out of your mouth of your day-to-day action is giving God glory. So in there, there's no middle ground. Again, you are praising somebody with your life. Let's let our lives give glory and give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because praise steals the enemy, all right? We talking about hijack praise here, okay? We're going to get a little bit further in. Avenger is someone who takes revenge on behalf of someone else. The enemy is always at war. There's a spiritual war going on. And when he's be, when he's knocking at you, when he's hitting at you, when he's trying to discourage you, it may be a person, it may be somebody on your job, it may be a family member. Sometimes your kids can say stuff that'll knock you. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. We know that the origin of it is Satan. Yes. Amen. 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 And he is doing it. Like you said, that person that might be speaking it, but it's on whose behalf? Satan's behalf. Amen. They represent Satan, the kingdom of darkness. And when you give glory and honor with your life and words and in deeds to the Lord, you are doing it on behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All those that who Satan used to come against you, persecute you, is done on his behalf because you came in the name of the Lord. See, he's not doing it for no reason because you are a representative. You are a citizen from another world, another kingdom, another government. So we are foreign, just kind of passing through, okay? So they attack all foreigners, eh? amen? So don't be moved or don't be surprised that the attacks come because you are representative of a government or citizen of another country called heaven. And there's always a spiritual war going on. Amen? Amen. NIV says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established strongholds against whose enemy? Your enemy. He has established strongholds against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. I like the voice. It says, from the mouth and souls of infants and toddlers, the most innocent ones. You have to come to him. Are you all innocent this morning? Amen. Because of who? Jesus. We are innocent. Yes. There are no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Amen. 
So we are innocent and we are walking after the spirit, not according to our flesh. That's what the attack is all about, to keep you operating in your flesh. Amen. That's the only way that he can win. Yeah. Amen. No condemnation. When the children of God, we are innocent in his sight because of what Christ did on the cross. We all understand that. Romans 8 tells us there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We must remember that we are in Christ Jesus and there is no condemnation. Amen. Amen. We are not going to walk in our flesh. That's right. We're not going to sow to our flesh. Because right. then when you begin to sow to your flesh... The enemy wants to take you to a place of what? Being what? Sin conscious. Amen? Amen. Amen. If I can keep them sin conscious and they won't understand who they are and I can keep them, if they stay sin conscious long enough, they're going to begin to operate in that manner. And then you're going to kind of titter totter. Okay? So always remember, your praise is key. The enemy is after your praise. Don't give it up. Amen? Amen. On the football field, I had to ask my, I heard interference, I had to ask my husband how this go, okay? On the football field, when they run interference, they trying to stop somebody from going to what? Victory. It might be a state championship, it may be a county championship, but they run interference to stop you. And it's not always fair, is it? Sometimes they hit you below the belt, don't you? And when you're watching it, you go, oh, that was a low blow. Satan always do low blows, y'all. Because he's always trying to run interference. He's trying to keep you from victory. And then sometimes, after that happens enough, people get kind of discouraged. And you've seen people, when they get up and walk out the stadium, it ain't over till God says over. Amen? We don't get up and we don't walk out just because we see the works of darkness, okay? You better know that you got the victory, okay? You better know in advance, no matter what blow he throws, you have the victory. Don't get up. Don't walk out. He prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemy. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to get up from that table. Amen. Don't get up. If you would turn to me to Matthew 21 and 14. Matthew 21 and 14, please. Matthew 21 and 14. Let's look what Jesus has to say about this, okay? And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. And he said unto him, Hear thou is, hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou hast perfected praise? Out of your mouth, when we come to him, leaning and depending on him, your praise is perfected. As you begin to offer up things, sacrifices of praise. Anytime you sacrifice unto God, it's considered a praise. Amen? Amen. In word, in deed, we praise him. So that's what Jesus has to say about it. He reminded them of the scripture. The children were worshiping and praising Jesus, their Messiah. See, these children, they're innocent. They only heard, and I'm pretty sure some of them, you know, passing through the city, they saw Jesus going through. So children adapt on, they're easy, they'll pick up what they see. They'll mimic adults, amen? amen? So they're mimicking. So here they are in the temple, they're worshiping and they're praising uh, God because it's a learned behavior, amen? amen. amen. That's right. But yet they understand who he is, amen. the Messiah. As the children of God, we journey through this word. Do we not understand 
who we're praising, who we're giving glory, who we're giving honor to. See, but you got to take your mind, you got to come to this thing, you got to approach these things as an innocent child, believing, because everything is hinged on your belief. Believing every word. I didn't see him on the cross, but I believe he hung there. Amen. 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 The children, some of them probably couldn't read, but they understood to worship the Messiah. Amen. Amen. And where praise is, he inhabits the praise of his people. So even though they may not have been able to read, just think about it. Because of the praise that was on their lip and on their tongue to the glory to thy king of king and, and lord of lords, he inhabited their praise. There was an understanding there. Amen. Amen. There was an understanding there of who he was. So always approach the things of God with that childlike, innocent faith. Right. Whether it makes sense to your natural, our little pea brain, as we say. Do know that the word is true. Yes. No matter what nobody try to convince you of. Life will con- try to convince you of that this stuff doesn't work. Yeah. It got to be more to it than that. It is not just that simple. Amen. 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 And see what throws us off a lot of times is the mere fact that we've got to deal with these issues that's before us. That's right. We got to go to the bank. Yes. We got to go to the school. We got to go and deal with that family member. We got to deal with the issue with that friend. That friend. And so while we dealing, we should be praising. God, I already know. You've already worked this out. It's already worked out. You worked it out before the foundation of the word. And we go stepping with the praise. But oftentimes we go, now when I get there, I know how they think. They going to say ABC. Now who is that giving praise to? The enemy. Okay. Now, Lord, when I get over there, if she open her mouth, if she say this, I'm going to trust you to get me. No, you not. Is who is that giving? See, you already giving. See, this stuff is so, it's so easy to slip into a a mold where you're not praising him. That's why you have to become love and love won't strike and love don't talk like that. Okay. Because it's so easy today to do. That's right. Amplified in that last part says, out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared and provided praise for yourself. Mm. All that we do is for his glory and it's for him. Yeah. It ain't even for you or the person. That's right. You're giving yeah. glory and he ordained the praise for who? For his own name's sake. How dare we not give him what's due to him? How dare we have situations in our life that is more worthy of giving praise to in a negative manner than that that we do give the one that hung, the one that shed his blood, the one that paid the price, the one that we owe our righteousness to. Praise. Praising him in all things. Luke 18. Turn with me to Luke 18, please. And we're going to start in the 16th verse. Luke 18 and 16. I'm going to read the amplified version. But Jesus called them to himself, saying to the apostles, Allow the children to come to me. And do not forbid them, for the kingdom of God belong to such as these. The kingdom of God belongs to those who humble themselves as children. Amen? Amen. 17. I assure you, and most Solomon say to you, whatsoever does not receive, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God with faith and humility like a child will not enter in at all. How do you enter into his rest? With that childlike, with humility, trusting and believing in the finished works of the cross. Praise is an expression of thanks. 
You're saying, Lord, I thank you. Praise is an expression of thanks. When you begin to exalt the name of Jesus and give him praise, it's an expression of thanks. You can go through the Psalms. Psalms 36, 5 through 9. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Psalms 22 and 22. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Amen. And it goes on and on. Psalm 72 and 18 through 19. God does wondrous things. 97. Praise God's holy name. So if you don't know what to say, just pick up the word and praise. Have you all noticed on Tuesdays when pastor come on, the guy, the, the guy always say the word and praise. Amen. You can't ever go wrong quoting the word of God. It's a form of praise that steals the enemy. Yeah. The, your praise of the word, your gl just glorify him. Yeah. When you don't know what to say. Yeah. Your spirit man knows what to say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Lean on it. Yeah. See, because life's would knock the wind out of you and you won't know what to say. Right. But he always knows what to say. Amen. It never catches him off God. Amen? Amen. It never catches him off God. So always give him praise, thanks, and glory. Amen? Amen. Can you all do that? Yes. Amen. Yes. Psalms 150, we quote this all the time. 150 and 6, it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Right. What is it saying? Let everybody submit. Right. Do you realize that praise is a form of submission? Yeah. Amen. 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 Submit yourselves. Praise. It's honoring him. It's recognizing him for who he is. Guess what? We can't praise and complain at the same time, can we? <laughs> So if you want to stop the complaining, if you hear you, okay, we all recognize when we complaining, right? Okay. So if you want to stop the complaining, praise the Lord. Say, so enemy, you, I'm not going to let you use my mind to complain. Instead, I chose to praise him because praise steals the enemy. And the little things. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I get tired of doing this. I, I mean, God, I just need a break. Is that complaining? Yes, it is. See, it's just the little simple things. You guys, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's the simple things that we mix. This is not no big whammy where he whopping you across the head. It's that little thing, but in the end, it is a big whop. It's going to lead you to hijacked praise, okay? Hijack praise. When we offer up praise, again, it's spiritual. It's a sacrificial offering to God, not man. Whether in song, whether we quote in scriptures, truth. Anytime you tell the truth, that's praising God, amen? Because he's the God of truth. Doing good to those that despitefully use you and abuse you. That's giving praise, amen? Hallelujah. The word and praise. Because we're supposed to bless our enemies and those that despitefully use us, amen? amen? Even when we make sacrifices for his namesake, we're denying the flesh and the desires of the flesh. It serves as a spiritual alert, amen? amen. It's a spiritual alert. Tell the enemy back off. Back off. I belong to someone. Back off. Back off. It steals the enemy. Amen. Back off. Back off. It's an alert to who? Your flesh. Because the enemy already knows what it means. But you're alerting your flesh. Back off. Flesh, shut up. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. 
and we exalt the name and we give him glory. Now, let's go to hijack, y'all. I'm going to read the definition of hijack. I thought this was interesting, okay? Hijack, unlawful siege. Who you belong to? Jesus. Okay. And remember, we're always in spiritual warfare, okay? It's the unlawful siege of an aircraft, ship, or vehicle that's in transit and forces it to go to a different destination or used for someone else's purpose. Hijacked. Amen? To rob a person or vehicle by force. It sounds like a thieving spirit to me. Amen? A thieving spirit. Now, the purpose of hijacking a vehicle is to steal something of value that the vehicle is carrying on board. So if the enemy can hijack your praise, praise belong to God and God alone. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, amen? Yeah. We are carriers yeah. of the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, amen? Yeah. And if he can rob your praise, amen? Yeah. He's taking, he's stealing right. because you are the carriers of praise. You are the carrier of praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We were born to do what? Praise him. Not praise Satan. So he's after your praise. Amen. God uses the believers, his vehicles of praise to stop the enemy. To steal the enemy. Remember that? He has established praise, ordained strength, established strongholds, a foundation, a solid foundation. We are carriers of the word, the word in praise. As carriers of the word, the enemy going to always try to keep your mouth shut, to keep your actions glorifying him and not the Lord. Hijack praise. Don't let the enemy hijack your praise. Amen. Don't let the enemy snuff the word out so you start giving him glory. So you stop exalting the word. Amen. Amen. Psalms 19 and 10. Go to, would you please turn there for me? Psalms 19 and 10. And it reads, More to be desired are they than gold. Yea. Than much fine gold, sweeter also than the hun than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. The word of God. He's talking about the word here. He's saying it's more to be desired than gold. So if the word in praise, anytime you exalt the word and you praise in the Lord, because that's what the word tells you to do. And if it's more to be desired than gold, most folk that hijack trucks that got money and gold, they be after the gold, right? So if your praise is more to be desired than gold, what, what, what do you think the enemy going to do? He's coming to get your praise. Amen. Yeah. He is coming to get your praise. More by them your servants is warned, reminded, illuminated, and instructed. In keeping them, there is great reward. Hijack praise. Yes, Lord. Transit. The word transit, passing from one place to another. Are we sojourners here? Yes. We passing from, we, 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 yes. our home is heaven. Passing through. We just passing through. We're sojourners. We are citizens of another world passing through this present world called earth. We are in transit here. It's temporal. Our home is heaven. Don't you all always remember that? So as vehicles of praise, we are in transit. Okay, so vehicles that they hijack are in transit. We're moving, right? 
the spirit of God is always moving, right? Then it's the enemy job to run an interference, a dirty blow to keep you from what? Moving toward the things of God. Moving toward victory. Amen? We are in transit here. We're always moving. God is always doing something in our lives. Amen? Amen? Amen. Forced. To force to go in a different, to a different destination. I wonder what destination is he trying to force you to go to? It ain't heaven, so it must be hell. Amen? Amen. That destination is hell by way of what? There's only one thing that will send you there. That's unbelief. He tried to knock you. He tried to discourage you. Discourage you. He tries to steal your praise. And then you fall off. And I don't know if this stuff work or not. You heard people say that. Well, I tried. We know if you try stuff, you got to believe it. You know what they did? You know, Egyptians did, okay? They tried to cross the Red Sea, right? Okay. So we don't try. We believe this word. Amen? Amen. Psalms 30 and 9. You don't have to turn there. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? You see what you all are. You all praise him and declare his truth. Yes. The enemy knows this. So he's always trying to force you to shut your mouth, to force you to use your life to glorify him and not the one that died for you. Amen. To get you not to believe the report of the Lord. To cause one to be discouraged, uh -huh. lose hope, guilt, doubt. Uh -huh. And when that happens, you revert back to your old sin nature. Amen. You've heard people say, I tried that Jesus thing, it didn't work. So I might as well just go ahead and just live it up. Yeah. You see the attack of the enemy? Wow. He's trying, and if you living it up, you living him, you giving him what? Praise. Your praise is always under attack. Amen. Under attack. Amen. They question the word of God. They're frustrated. They're short patient. No endurance. It's a plot to get you to surrender. See, because you've already been given this. But his goal is to get you to, res to surrender it. Right. To, res to uh, surrender your joy. Your peace, your hope, your love for the word of God, hijacked, hijacked praise to walk contrary to the word of God and find yourself in a backslidden state. When you hear the word backslidden, that's just someone's praise that's been hijacked. They lost confidence in the word of praise. That's all. That's, it's just simply that. So. Are you in a position to make a citizen arrest? Can you go and arrest that spirit? Or do you get with them and go, you know, you right. I had this situation and it didn't work for me either. Not both of y'all being hijacked. But we are to be citizens who snatch back each other and say, hey, let's get on track here. Don't let him steal your praise. Keep your joy. Yes. Lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. When you don't know nothing else to say, just call on the Jesus. Yes. The name that's above every name. The name that every knee must bow to. Yes. Don't get with them. Don't get with them, you guys. Yes. Proverbs 26 and 11 says it like this. As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. Galatians 4 and 9. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, see, God knows you. That's right. Amen? Amen? How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? See, the enemy is trying to take you to bondage. When, pe when someone hijack you, are you in bondage? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yep. It's a simple message, but yet powerful. 
Don't let the enemy steal or hijack your praise. Give him praise in all in everything. Amen. If you can't say anything, just say, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. 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 Don't say it. Just say shh, shh, shh. Quiet yourself until you can think clearly. See, because a lot of times when you're being hijacked, if you panic, you don't know what to do. That's right. They get you, oh, oh God, what am I doing? What am I going to do? And then there are, you all have seen the movies where people are trying to hijack the plane or hijack some, and the, and the people end up whopping them across the head or, or, or taking them and handcuffing them. Right. See, we handcuff the enemy with our what? Praise. Amen. We should take authority over that situation. Yeah. The enemy has no business hijacking the people of God's praise. Amen? Amen. But you've got to recognize that's what he's doing. Amen. Hijacked praise. He's trying to force you to go to a different destination. Amen? Amen. Don't let him do it. Psalms 8 and 5 But ye but you made them almost like gods. Listen at this. And crowned them with glory and honor. That's what he did for you all. You put them in charge of everything you made. You put everything under their control. You, you see why he hates you. People rule over the sheep and the cattle and all the wild animals. They rule over the birds in the sky and the fish that swim in the sea. I want to make this as simple as possible. Lord, our Lord, your name is the most wonderful name in all the earth. That power and that authority that God has given you. If the enemy can hijack your praise, you will not walk in it. You will not operate in it. Amen. Amen. He made these earthen vessels the temple of the Holy Ghost. The enemy has no business hijacking the temple of God Amen. through no means. Amen. Amen. If he hijack your praise, he can confound you. Amen. And he can bound you. We don't want to be bound because we're not giving him praise. Praise frees you. Y'all remember pray, uh, Paul in prison? In the, a late in the midnight hour. We say God's going to turn it around. But is we speaking turn it around words? Are we? So we want God to turn it around. Anytime you open your mouth in praise, that thing is automatically turned around because he inhabits the praise of his people. And the word is true. So you can go ahead and thank him right there without seeing any results. God, I'm going to thank my way in. I'm going to praise my way to victory. Amen. Amen. It's just victory. Every time you open your mouth, you make him one step closer to victory. One step closer to victory. But the enemy is trying to get you to go backwards. Amen? Backwards. Don't do it. Don't do it. Give him praise. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. When we call on the name of Jesus, that's a form of praise. Jesus. Yeah, you call him like you mean it. Don't just call him because I say call him. Call him because you understand that name. Amen. And you understand what he did. Hallelujah. Praise wins battles. Amen. Amen. Praise wins battles. For the believers, we know that the battle is already won. But if the enemy can hijack your praise... He can cause you to miss out on that that God has already ordained from the foundation of the earth for you. Because if he can snuff your praise out, you'll become discouraged. Unbelief will sit in, okay? It'll sit in. 
praise wins battles because it causes you to stay in a place of believing and reverence in the things of God. You reverence his word. You reverence I am victorious. Amen? Amen. Praise. A simple word. Praise. Yet not so simple. David in Psalms 144. David the warrior. He rejoiced in the Lord and he sang praise, understanding that the Lord was his source of the power and protection. We praise him now, understanding that Jesus has already secured the victory. We have the power and the authority. We have a better covenant now, amen, because of the Christ, Jesus, a better than a covenant. Amen. 144, bless the Lord my strength which teaches my hand to war and my fingers to fight. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Guess what? The fight's already won. The fight's already fixed. All you got to do is bless him. But if I can keep you from not blessing the Lord, from giving him honor, I can get you discouraged. I guarantee you. See, the enemy is betting that he can discourage you enough to cause you to abort. That's right. Amen? Don't abort. Don't abort. Amen. Don't abort. Amen. Let's go to 2 Chronicles now. 2 Chronicles 20. Let's start in the first verse. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others besides Ammon, the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat in battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazar Tarma, which is Indige. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself. He set himself, look what he did now, okay? To do what? Seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. So when we're faced with the situations, because life has its woes, amen, some of them we call them battles, but they're not battles uh, in God's eyes because they've already been born. All, all the believer uh, is to experience is victory. Amen. You got to already see no matter what you face, you already have the victory. Amen. So as he set himself to seek the Lord, he proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. We know fasting is for you to get your flesh out the way, okay? Let me get me out the way so I can take flight in him, amen? And when you get yourself out the way, praise is going to automatically kick in, amen? amen? Automatically. And now you are moving vehicle, and the enemy already know you done you got yourself out the way. Oh, they're going to take flight. We got to stop that praise. So they're going to try to hijack you, okay? We got to stop them. We can't let them get too far. I got to stop them. Got to stop them. Oh, they finna take flight. They finna take flight. Oh, shout out about Satan. Then, boom, something happened on your job. Boom, something happened with your children. Then, here you go. You got something with your immediate family. You got three or four fires that were just, 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 just blew up. And then you go, God, what is going on? The enemy is just fighting. The enemy is trying to hijack your praise. Instead of saying, God, what's going on? God, I see the workings of the enemy. But you know what? I thank you. I honor you. I praise you. I give you glory because I already have the battle in all five of these for wars. These fires, I've already had the victory. And the fire of the Holy Ghost will quench the fiery dots. And I thank you in advance. And then you can go in and you can deal and you can be a smooth operator. And they go, do she not see what's going on? Well, she must don't know half of her team is talking about her and they don't went to the, uh, the county office on her or wherever they go, okay? And she might lose her job. And then you get wind of it. Now, Lord, I done sold them this job and I've been sewing and now they want to come against me. You see how you can easily slip yeah. and lose your praise? Yeah. When that was the whole point of it, to get you to say something that's 
opposite of what you should be saying. Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because the weapon that formed against you didn't prosper. And I thank you. And I work unto the Lord, not unto man. Thy will be done in my life. You are the soul and the author and I have given you the will of my life. And I thank you, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Show them your glory. Show up and show out. Is that what we're saying, y'all? Come on. No, 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 no. Most of the time, that's not what we're saying. But that's what we should be saying. Amen? Amen. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah, verse 5, and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou the God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? Yes, he does. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. He began to give, that's praising the word and praise, amen? He began to praise the Lord. Right there. Verse 8. And they dwelt therein, and having built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. It's all for you, his name's sake. It has nothing to do with your name. It's for his name's sake. He, what he has built in these earthen vessels is for his name's sake. I'm in you. I'm with you. Lead it and guide you. And it's all for my glory. It's for his glory. Drop down to verse 12. It says, Our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. When you get in a situation and you don't know what to do, see, if you keep your eyes on him, He'll instruct you in the way, and you are always know you are always know what to do, Amen. because he's a futuristic God. He'll give you a dream. He'll speak a word to you months later, and you'll go, "Oh God, you've already dealt with this. I already know which way to go because you've already showed me. You already spoke the scripture to me." Amen. His eyes was upon the Lord. Verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye all J Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thy king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, no fear, nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but whose? Always, no matter what you find yourself in, you belong to someone else. Someone purchased you over 2,000 years ago. You do not belong to yourself. Amen? So no matter what you find yourself in, he is in full control. The battle is not yours because you're just a vehicle. You're just a carrier of the word. But the strike is about what's in you. So the battle is not even about you. It's about him. Amen. Not about us. We always say that it's about Jesus. But when we're in them battles, it feels like it's about us, right? But remember, it's not about you. It's about what you're carrying. And the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. It is the Lord. Verse 18. No, let's go back up to 16. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Hold, behold, they come up by the cliff of Zig, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. He even let them know where they're at. You, the enemy going to be there now. He's going to be present. And he sent them down, did he not? He, he told them, you know, I want you to go down now. They're going to be there. Ye shall not need to fight though, okay? Amen. Do we need to fight you guys? No. Because the battle is already what? No. One. We just need to do what? Pray. Don't let him hijack you what? Pray. Amen. 
Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Is he always with you? Always. He's in you, right? Yes. No matter which way you move, he's there. Yes. Amen. 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 Always. Verse 18. And, Je and Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping him. Can you imagine that? They're in the face of the enemy, and what are they doing? Pray, praise and worship again. When you're faced with your Goliath, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you running scared? Are you praising him? Knowing that you got the victory. Knowing that you got the victory. Verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be what? Established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye profit. In this day and time, they had the prophets prophesying, okay? The prophet is in us, okay? Amen. He speaks to us individually. Amen? Amen. Individually. And that's, a, that, that's awesome all by itself. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. That's your battle song. That's your victory song. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, set ambush. Look what the praise did, you guys. The Lord said ambush. Now, did they say ambush or did the Lord say ambush? The Lord said ambush. That's what it reads. Against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Praise still the enemy. Praise go before you in every situation when you understand the power in your praise. And understand that the enemy is going to try to come and hijack that praise. Amen? Amen. Because if that's the one thing that can stop him, well, I've got to get them to shut their mouth. i got to get them to glorify me in their word, in their language, in their deeds, in their, spe in their speech, and not the Lord. Because praise still the enemy. Amen? Because you're always on the move because God is always moving. The song, we sing the song, he's moving in my direction. Do y'all re really re believe that? God is always moving on your behalf. He's always moving on your behalf no matter what situation you're in. Praise steals the enemy. Amen? Amen. Verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Wow, what you say? The enemy, they turn against each other. They turn against each other. Amen. Say what? Uh -huh. They didn't have to say anything bad about them. They didn't have to put their mouth on them. They turned against one another because who said the ambush? The Lord set the ambush and it was all done through praise. 
praise steals the enemy. It stops the hijacking. Amen? Amen. Don't let him hijack your praise. Verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. None, you guys. And Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoils of them. They found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off themselves more than they could carry away. What a blessing. And they were three days in gathering the spoils. It was so much. Three days, you guys. Three days. Verse 27. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies through praise. And they came to Jerusalem with psalters and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Look at the report. With your lives, are you, do you use your life? The word tells the life that I now live, I live through the face of the faith of the Son of God. Do your life bring him glory? Are you standing during adversity by way of praise? See, because people as a believer, people are watching you. They see when you're going through, amen? amen. amen. And they're waiting to see what your report and your outcome is going to be. Amen. Amen. So will you stand and give him glory or will you vert back because of discouragement? And then they say, well, she said where well, the Lord was going to bless her with her husband. She said the Lord said she was going to get a house. She said, see, they always be saying she said the Lord said. It's not what you said, it's what the Lord has promised. Amen? Amen. Spiritual growth. That's first and most important. Because if you get that, you let this word grow you up. He said, she said, said would be cut out. Amen? Amen. That, would, that would take care of that. That automatically hijacks he said, she said. See, if anybody ought to be doing hijacking, we should be doing a citizen's risk. We should be hijacking the enemy. He shouldn't be hijacking our praise, you guys. You know that, right? So which one are you going to do? You're going to let him hijack your praise or you going to hijack him? Handcuff him. Arrest him. No more. Will you operate in my life? No more. So that's why it's good to teach young children to praise the Lord. Why they innocent, why they young, why they got that childlike faith. Amen. Teach them to praise the Lord. Amen. Teach them to praise the Lord. And when they grow up, it may seem like they're going to get away from it. But trust me, it's going to do what it does. Yeah. They'll come back. Right. They'll come back. Yeah. I remember when our kids were, were younger and because I was uh, at, at home mom. And when they were little, we used to go through the house and we would make a train and one would hold me on my hips and then the other one would hold the other one. And we would just go from room to one in the room in the house. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, I was in pain during that time, okay? But I praise my way right on up out of it. There were some days where I was bedridden because the medicine would knock me out. I said, but God, this is not my story. I found energy to get up and do this train because I knew that I could praise my way out of it. And one foot at a time, 
We praise you, Jesus, one foot at a time. And the day came, you guys, during that time, I didn't even drive. Miss Rita was here, you remember. I didn't drive. They were all, when I come to church, they were laying hands on my shoulders. I would be discombobulated. I had vertigo. You name it, I had it, okay? To the point I didn't drive for two years. I didn't go to the grocery store. My husband had to shop for grocery, but I praised my way out of it. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This shall not be my story. That was not my story. I will drive again. I will grocery shop again. To the glory of God. He will not leave me like this. And guess what? No matter what situation you're in, he will not leave you there. Praise your way out of it. Praise your way out of it. Praise your way out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. I, Pastor Omar Ellison, Lady Ellison, and the Salt and Light family would like to thank you for joining us in today's broadcast. You can visit us at 1350 East Mayhan Drive, which our service times are every Sunday at 12 noon and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can also visit us at Facebook and YouTube at Salt and Light Covenant Church or visit us at our website at saltandlightcovenant.com. We thank you again, and until next time, you be blessed. <laughs>